Hi, Greg. Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to join us. We're uh, going to jump straight into questions. As always, uh, please keep your microphones on mute if you're not asking the question, and let me know if you'd like to ask anything using the hand raise function. Uh, we will go ahead and jump into questions now. I think uh, the only hand up right now is Josh Gessman, so we'll start with you. Josh, go ahead. Hey, Greg. How's it going? Josh, great. Thanks. Good. Um, a couple questions. Um, one on, on squad rotation and, and this being sort of the first three game week of the year. Are you setting an expectation with the players that this is, is how it's going to go for like, you know, the other 11 or however many short rest games you have for the rest of the year? Is there a way or a magic wand to sort of manage some of these short rest weeks? Yeah, we're uh, we're definitely aware of and cognizant of uh, where guys are at physically and, and what they've been able to accomplish to this point as well. And uh, and checking in with everybody after each of these games and uh, and trying to be diligent about what we're doing between games to allow guys maximum recovery and having them prepared for each of them. So um, yeah, th there will be, there'll be some rotation uh, candidly and in, in some of our positions, we aren't as deep as we are in some others. Um, there's also just some, some thought process in terms of our opponents. Uh, we were able to, you know, we got some guys out a little bit earlier in the last game, you know, at 60 minutes, 70 minutes, which can help them turn around a little bit more for this next game. Uh, so there, there's different things that we're thinking about through the process of it process, but ultimately it's, we're going to check in with guys right now and, uh, and through tomorrow and see where, where everyone's at as we, as we approach tomorrow, but we definitely have a plan going into it, but it's, it's never always set in stone, you know? And then a, a little update on, on housekeeping stuff, uh, updates on injuries to Steras and Via Fania, and then uh, an update on uh, Revelason and where, where he's at. Yeah, uh, let's start with Steras. Um, he has a, a mild uh, hamstring strain, so I don't know exactly the time frame, but he won't be available for this weekend. Uh, and uh, Jorge... Um, he took a knock in the game. It's more of a bruise than anything. Uh, we, we got that all checked out. And so if, you know, if he can continue to recover and feel okay as we go in tomorrow, then he will be, uh, he'll be available. Uh, I'll know more today as we get out and move around a little bit, but I think he's making, making the right kind of progress. Uh, Revelison is, should, should be in town in town is LA, um, if, by this weekend. Uh, which would put him in the mix for the upcoming matches from here on out. So uh, finally, we got some clarity, at least on the timeline of that one. Um, so yeah, we're, that's that's where we are, I think, with everybody. Uh, Danilo is back. He, he's got a little bit of a, an issue that we're managing, um, but nothing nothing serious, but enough that he will he won't be available for, for this weekend. Perfect. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Josh. We'll go next to a question from Damian Calhoun with Daily News. Damian, go ahead. Hey, Greg. Hey, Damian. Um, I, some of the questions I wanted, Josh already uh, asked that. But um, one thing, when, when you when you when you look at the group and you know your 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 what three games in eight days, are there signs that you you sort of look for in in, in players that say you know what this guy really needs to you know either a 45 minute shift or a 60 minute uh, game or just sort of hold him out in the game itself? You know, we take uh, a little bit into, into consideration a few different things. One is, is just how the players giving us feedback where they're at in terms of fatigue. Um, and uh, second is a little bit in terms of what have they accomplished to date in terms of the amount of playing that they've had what they've been able to do and put together in terms of training, playing, so that whether we feel like they are capable of, of turning around in a short notice, put those two things together a bit. Um, and we, you know, we collaborate on that. We go into this with a plan. I usually communicate in advance what, I, what, what the plan is for certain guys as we get into this week and how we're going to approach it. Um, but from game to game, we, we will, we'll, like I said, meet with guys after and just kind of see where they are when they get out of games. Every game is a little different. Sometimes guys put a lot more into one game versus another. And uh, and the fact that we were able to get a lead in the last game, we didn't hold on to it in the end and had to come get back uh, one at the very stretch. But we, we were able to get a few guys out, you know, that we think we could transition into this game a little bit more 
um, with their legs. So uh, there's a, there's a number of things that go into it, but we're trying to prepare and we're trying to win each game first and foremost. And second is, uh, is manage guys to get them from match to match. So that we can, we can be as, um, as close to where we'd like to be as we get to each, each game. And, uh, San Jose, we know they're coming off the, what was it four, nothing, five, nothing loss there. And then they have to fly back, um, cross country. I mean, it's a rivalry game. What do you expect out of them? Do you expect the same? San Jose wants the Galaxy get on the field. Yeah, I mean, I think there'll be a reaction from from them in terms of nobody likes to go out and, and get smashed uh, in any game, and and that's frustrating. I think uh, from a mentality standpoint, I think they'll have a, a reaction to that. In addition, you add the fact that it's LA that's in town and they're at home. That I'm sure there'll be some form of a reaction in terms of mentality and effort and all of that. I don't think they go too far away from what it is that they do. Um, there's little variations inside the man on man marking, uh, that they will throw from time to time. Um, and so I'm sure we'll see one of those different variations. Um, but outside of that, they're not going to completely change what they do. And, uh, again, it'll be important for us to, to be aware of, of, you know, which, uh, which man on man sort of rotations they use how they start to initiate pressure and not try try not to get into a game of chaos and try to keep the game as as clear and organized as we can all right thanks yeah thanks damien we'll go next to larry morgan with corner of the galaxy larry go ahead hi greg thanks for speaking with us again larry. um you're having a rematch with a team that you admittedly had a pretty tough time against the last the last time your these teams met, what lessons can you take from that last meeting and apply them into this one? Yeah, you know, I think the last time we played them, um, we had a very sound first half. We we left some opportunities and some goals on the table that would have, I think, given us separation down the stretch in the in the second half. Uh, you know, in the second half, I thought at times they increased um, they increased their pressure and their pressing, and they. They showed just a slight variation in how they were going to initiate pressure, and we didn't, we weren't, um, we didn't manage it, recognize it, and manage it as clean as we did in the first half, which really kind of held them at bay. Uh, and when when that happens, and when you turn over the ball against uh, against San Jose because of the man on man pressing, the game becomes chaotic, becomes a lot of transitions, it becomes anybody's game. And I felt like that's a bit of the game that we got into down the stretch, which is not really where we ultimately would like to be with them. So I think again, it's just. Uh, we've got to, to recognize what it is they're doing and how they're doing it and make sure that we understand where time is on the field and how we can, um, we can manage the, the man on man and not let the game turn into a game of transitions and, and, uh, uh, and, and, and attacks and the game shifting into our half the field. So a little bit of that is, is just, it's concentration and awareness. Um, aside from that, I always think against, uh, San Jose, it's about taking your chances. I mean, you, you're going to. You're probably going to create some chances as as did um you know orlando created their chances they score their chances and they get on the right side of the game uh and then it becomes a different game in our first game against them it was the same thing we took a chance if we take a couple of the other chances that we have that are really good looks then the game looks a little bit different down the stretch than it did when it's a, a one zero and, and we're trying to manage manage that down the end so um yeah i think i think it's going to look very similar. Uh, again, the question is going to be how aggressive they're going to try to press and how aggressive they'll be with their man-to-man -man defending. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. I think we have one more question left. We'll go to Rodrigo Serrano with Diario. Rodrigo, go ahead. Hey, great. Thanks for the time. Um, should we expect to for Javier to see less minutes since after the game against Vancouver? He said he was so exhausted. Uh, and, you know, uh, you have a game... Uh, coming soon so we should we expect like 45 minutes 60 minutes coming into sub yeah i don't uh i'll sit down with javier see how he's recovering um always after a game everybody's exhausted especially a game like that and at altitude and so uh i expect him to say that after a game because he just put in a, a big shift to get a result um after a couple of days of of recovery, I'll feel out where he's at as we go into tomorrow, and and we'll make a decision on what that timeline looks like uh, for him going into into the match. So I don't have a don't have an answer, and if I did, I probably wouldn't share with you on the video. But <laughs> just to be candid, but at the same time, I, I would say uh, as we get close to the game, we'll have a good sense of where he's at at physically. Though I appreciate I appreciate the question. Thank you. 
Thanks, Craig. I think we have uh, one more from uh, Jorge Herrera. Jorge, if you want to get it in quickly, go ahead. No problem. Thank you, guys. Um, Greg, how do you, could you give us like your opinion about Efrain, his last game, and now that he could possibly have a call up for the Gold Cup with Mexico because of Rodolfo Pizarro's injury? Could you talk to us about what you think, if he deserves it, and all of that? Yeah, I, I think uh, Efra is a, a very talented young player who he shows uh, a lot of his capabilities in these little flashes. And we saw it the other night when he, you know, he takes a half volley off of a off of one step and pins it in the upper corner in a in a two one game that gives us a, a result. You know, prior to that, he probably had five or six touches and balls that he lost that we needed him to hold on to. It's a young player. He's with a with a high level of talent, and when he hits when he when the talent pops out, then you're like, wow, this, you know, this kid is, is amazing. When, when the moments where he loses possession, where he shouldn't, we go, okay, he's a young player. He's still maturing. He's got to make a cleaner decision in that moment. So uh, he clearly has the potential to be a national team player. He is clearly has potential to change games uh, and, and also has the ability to change games. It's just going to be about consistency and, and recognizing the different moments and, and being able to provide the best solutions in, in, in the given moments of the game, given the circumstances of the game. You know, we're up 1-0 and we, not just him, but too many guys are losing balls where we need to secure balls and, and win the game. We don't necessarily need another goal. Uh, but then when we get down to it, we gave up a goal and he's the guy that answers when we do need the second goal and, and makes an incredible play. So again, it's, He's a young player that needs space to continue to learn and grow. And he is, his positioning is getting better. The organization of his body, he's, re he's, he's setting up in better positions to be able to, uh, to create and, and recognize final attacks and final opportunities. And he has the ability to score. He has the ability to hit the final pass. He has the ability to scoop by players in, in the 1v1 and, and open up new spaces. So he has all of those tools. Now it's just about applying them at the right moment with the right um, like I said, with the right maturity and, and whether it needs to be a final moment or just a securing the ball moment. And, and he's going to be a fantastic player. We just, we're, for us, just to continue to teach him and to give him the space to continue to grow. As it relates to the Gold Cup, I have not heard anything about him potentially being involved in the Gold Cup, but, um, you know, what, whatever happens, happens. And for us, obviously, we're, we have him here and our goal is to continue to develop him and bring him, bring him along. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Greg. We appreciate your time. That's all for today. Yeah. Hey, guys. We'll have LA Galaxy forward Javier Hernandez joining us uh, momentarily. If you'd like to ask a question, use the hand raise function. We'll have time for maybe two or three in English and then two or three in Spanish, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it's looking. Um, we'll go first to a question again from Damien Calhoun. Damien, go ahead. Hey, Javier. Hey. Um, just want to get your thoughts on, on how... Um, your recovery, you're, you're in a stretch here, you're three games in eight days. How do you, in the, in the days off, how do you sort of prepare yourself for the game? Like coming off of Wednesday, we just, are, are you getting ready for Saturday? Uh, yeah, we need to get ready. We need to sleep a lot, rest a lot, eat a lot, <laughs> stretch a lot. I mean, everything, you know, therapy, massage. Uh, I think we have a very good uh, uh, fitness uh, staff in that way, you know. So, I mean, they're doing uh, the best as they can so we can have all the tools so we can recover as quick as possible. And, and I mean, it's been a long time, but kind of my, my body knows um, about this uh, type of, of, of games, you know, in the middle of the weeks, there were weeks when I was playing in Europe that it was very often like you play four or five weeks in a row playing two games uh, per week. You know what I mean? Like Saturday, Wednesday, and then Saturday again, then Wednesday nonstop. So, I mean, my body knows a little bit about that, even though it's been a long time with my body Feel this. I'm 33, so I mean, I'm just trying to do my best to recover. I have a, a my my team as well helping me with the food, with supplements, uh, with uh, exercises, stretching, every every way that it can uh, that I can implement and it can uh, help me my recovery. That's what we all are trying to do it. But yeah, I mean, uh, we still have uh, today's training. Then tomorrow the, the game is going to be at night, and hopefully we can be ready to to get three more points. All right, thank you. Thanks, Damien. We'll go next to Ryan Tolmich with goal. Ryan, go ahead. Hey, Javier. How's it going, man? Good, thank you. You? How are you? 
Good, good. And you talked about Efrain the other day and, and the highs and lows that kind of come with being a young player. And he's not the only young player on this team, whether that's Julian or Cameron or whoever. But, you know, you've lived those moments, the good and the bad. And, and that's something that you went through when you were a young player in Mexico or Manchester or whatever. You know, what are the lessons that you learned from those moments that those guys are kind of going through now, the good times and the bad times? And now that you're kind of the leader and the mentor, how do they learn those lessons, especially in a world with social media and everything else going on around it? I mean, it's difficult for me to do it, in a, even though even though I love to speak and, and answer the questions in a very long way, it's very difficult for me to just uh, tell you a few things because, I mean, even now, in, I'm 33 and I keep uh, learning and, and, and knowing a lot about myself, you know, constantly. So, I mean, the only, the, the things that I come to my mind for them uh, and, and the, the ones that I can um, express about my journey like pretty pretty young it's like to be patient uh, to push myself to trust in myself but as well uh, like listening and and observing my surroundings because what i did when i was a young kid uh, i mean i'm still i'm 33 years old but i mean <laughs> when, when i was 18 or something like that what i, what, what I was in my mind every I think that's something that my my granddad and my my dad my whole family uh, like educate me in that way it was like absorb absorb everything you know so uh, my dad has a phrase in spanish that is if you if you like if you want to become something or someone you need to to start being one you know so if you want to be a top player in every way you need to to become one i mean mama mentality is about that about Kobe because i was i was watching some tiktoks about him and his mentality he was like that you need to become you need to to, to go and do it you know you are young and and it's complicated and sometimes opportunities are not there in a way but how you can get those opportunities are are, are that you need to be patient you need to keep grinding you need to keep working and the most important part is like, it's not going to be easy. So you, you shouldn't quit. So what I said about Efrain, it was like, that's that's a reminder of not only ourselves, we know the talent for himself, that he can do that. Obviously, he's not going to do it every single day, but at least he needs to put the effort and at least he needs to 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 set his own uh, like bar higher. Because if you want to be a national team player, if you want to play in Europe, if you want to be a 11 starter for the LA Galaxy, if you want to... To, to be constant, if you want to be a leader in assists, leader in goals, in performances, being in a national team, I said it again, then have a big jump and go to Europe, play World Cups and all of that stuff. You need to keep doing it, the, the things that no one is, is, is seeing it, not outside of the stadium, like every single day workout that you do by yourself, the treatments, the recovery, uh, how you take care of yourself, how you need to pay every price uh, for 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 the life that you deserve, you know, and to achieve all the stuff. And sorry that, that I said that I wasn't going to, 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 to talk a lot and I just went through it. But yeah, I think that that's something that I that I want to, to express about him and about every young player, not even in LA Galaxy, in my, in my hometown, in my country, in every part in the world. Awesome. Thank you, Javier. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Thanks, Ryan. We'll do uh, one more in English. We'll go next to Josh Gessman. Josh, go ahead. Hey, Javi, thanks for, for taking thanks, the time. Um, I wanted to look back at the Vancouver game, and especially at the, the start of that second half, you guys came out and scored that goal. Beautiful goal. Everything really came together for you. Are you starting to feel, is everybody starting to feel a little more comfortable? Are you seeing more of that in training where everybody is sort of on the same page in those moments? Um, you know, sure. Are things starting to progress? Yeah, for sure. But something, uh, and, and thank you for, for, for bringing that up because I, I want, I want to, to, to say something about, uh, starting from me, like I always said, you know, I'm the first one when, when I express anything about uh, the team is, I'm, I'm the one, if I said it, I'm the one who, who needs to, to, to lead by, by example, right? A part of, of like everyone, I think we're improving and we're improving so much. The clear uh, uh, like aspect that we need to keep improving so much starting from me and with a whole team a part of tactics techniques it's it's the, the the emotional balance because if you see what 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 we took about outside of that game it was like yeah of course we went one zero and we start uh, scoring one goal straight from from the locker room right but then from there the, the of course 
without without being disrespectful with Vancouver, and we know it's a very physical side. They very, they play a very direct uh, a soccer style that is very uncomfortable for every team in the in the league. So they are a very good side, right? But a part of that is like we need to keep maintaining that. We need to keep believing that if we score one, we can we can skip uh, score sorry two or three. But a, a part of that sometimes in soccer. Regardless of the chances, for example, the Seattle game, we create so many chances that we just score one out of a penalty kick. And sometimes that happens. But we need to be very consistent in our emotions and our mindset that we need to keep maintaining the ideas that Greg told us, uh, your motivation. Like, it doesn't need... Because if you... Uh, in a soccer, if you stay... If you give the power to your emotion to the last play you did, you are over, right? Because if you score a goal, then your emotion is like this. But then the next the next play, you miss a one v one chances, then your emotion goes down. And then if you miss a penalty, your emotion goes to go deeper sometimes. So that's what we all as a team need to be more like, like a, yeah, together. And we need to, to maintain that, a very consistency, emotional, a mindset. Because then, yeah, we can we can escape, we can keep scoring goals. We can uh, concede one goal in the last minute, and then Efra can do something magical in the last minute, and we win two one. But you know, if we want to get into the playoffs, if we want to be a championship team, we need to be more consistent in that way, right? We need to maintain that, regardless of the outcome. We all young players, all players, players that they're having uh, four or five seasons in the MLS, new players, whatever. We need to be very uh, confident about ourselves that we are good players with a good team and we need to prove it and we need to maintain that regardless if they score two goals three goals like we, we saw it against Portland for example with 10 men less it was difficult but we keep going we keep going so we need to prove that uh, that consistency if I said I, I bring it up a little bit about the motion and the mindset but I think it's as well in the tactics in the ideas that Greg want to want us to to play inside the pitch like we need to have so so clear our fundamentals and we need to be consistent. I think that's a word for the LA Galaxy that we need, starting from me, to, to, to maintain and to prove inside uh, uh, the pitch. Great, thanks, Javi. You're welcome. Thanks, Josh. We'll uh, move into Spanish now. We'll go first to a question from Katia Castorena with ESPN. Katia, go ahead. Thanks, Chris. Javier, gusto saludarte. Quería preguntarte, por supuesto, tú tienes toda la experiencia del mundo en manejar el entorno, el, el, tu carrera te respalda, pero sientes que a estas alturas, además de que habías expresado que tenías esa deuda con, con el club después de lo que fue el 2020, ¿sientes que todavía Chicharito tiene que estar demostrando quién es, tiene que estar probando esa parte? A ver, yo creo que... Yo creo que... Aquí, alguien... Yo creo que eso es, eso es de cualquier ser humano, no nada más en un futbolista, como tú también, en tu, tu, tu cadena, también a ti te gustaría probar lo, lo, lo valiosa que eres, la, la confianza que tú tienes en ti, lo, la, la calidad que tú tienes como reportera, como eh, periodista, etc. Yo creo que eso va más allá de, de chicharito y va más allá del fútbol y va más allá de todo. Yo creo que uno lo hace por el placer de empujarse y de tratar de ser una mejor versión y obviamente eh, al poder alcanzar todos los sueños que, que, que todo ser humano, todos nosotros tenemos en nuestra cabeza. Así que, a ver, yo lo único que hago es sé lo que, lo que, de lo que soy capaz Amo completamente jugar fútbol y también tengo una motivación muy interna y una certeza interna que, que, que no depende absolutamente de lo que ni la gente diga ni lo que vaya sucediendo. Yo lo único que hago es entregarme todo, darlo todo con, con muchísima pasión, con muchísimo compromiso y tratar de, 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 de no guardarme absolutamente nada porque como, como es la vida, ¿no? uno nunca sabe cuánto tiempo va a estar acá. Entonces a veces creemos que tenemos un día más de vida y normalmente tenemos un día menos. Entonces hay que exprimirlo al 100, entonces yo creo que, que, que va más allá de, de, de Chicharito, de fútbol, de México y de mucho menos, yo creo que cada uno hace y, de, y todos yo creo que deberíamos de, de darlo todo en nuestras profesiones y darlo todo en, por la lucha de, de, de alcanzar nuestros sueños. Sin duda, muchas gracias. Thanks, Katia. We'll go next to Fernando Schwartz. Fernando, go ahead. Y thank you, Chris. Eh, hola, Javier, me da muchísimo gusto Fer. saludarte. Oye, una pregunta obligada y tiene que ser porque eres un cuate bien emocional. Te había gustado mucho estar en la prelista. Yo ahora que no llegas a Copa Oro, ¿esto te afecta cuando hasta estás teniendo un año excelente, llevas ocho goles? Y además la gente, la gente se molestó de que no fuiste llamado a la selección porque mereces una jerarquía, eres el máximo goleador en la historia del tri. Pues mira, eh, Fer, la realidad es de que yo voy a seguir expresándome de la selección nacional como un fanático más, porque sigo siendo un fanático más, al igual que tú, al igual que todos nosotros que estamos acá y que le deseamos 
lo mejor a la selección mexicana. Ya será otra narrativa, ya podremos platicar en algún momento si llego a estar en la selección, pero por lo pronto soy un fanático más y lo único que deseo y que espero es de que puedan ganar la Copa Oro, puedan ganar la medalla de oro, puedan calificar al Mundial y, y puras cosas positivas para ellos. Como tú, en lo positivo que estás después de la gran preparación que tuviste, tú dijiste, esta va a ser mi temporada y te preparaste como dos meses antes que el resto del equipo. Sí, así es, sí, lo estoy, lo estoy dando todo prácticamente dentro y fuera, y fuera de, 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 de los terrenos de juego, estoy dándolo todo absolutamente para, pues bueno, para, para poder eh, conseguir lo que, lo, que, lo que sueño, que es poder ayudar a esta institución a ganar su sexta copa. Thanks, Fernando. We'll go next to Rodrigo Serrano. Rodrigo, go ahead. Hola, Javier, ¿cómo estás? ¿Qué eh, tú? El, bien, bien, gracias. Recuerdo que en memoria tú estabas acostumbrado a jugar partidos de liga, Champions entre semana, partidos de liga. Físicamente, ¿cómo te sientes con una semana tan apretada en la MLS? ¿Y qué opinas de la llegada de Funes Mori al tri? Primero, cansado, cansado. Pues la verdad que lo, lo, lo dije en la, en la pregunta que me hicieron en inglés que más allá de que obviamente tuve la, la, la fortuna de poder vivir calendarios así cuando estuve en, en Europa y algunos pocos también en, en selección cuando son partidos cada tres, cuatro días. Este, sí, mi cuerpo lo sabe, pero también te, tengo muchísimo tiempo, año y medio, casi dos años, sin haber tenido una semana así con, con tantos partidos eh, tan seguidos, que yo, le, que, que, que yo le llamo como casi tres partidos en casi una semana, ¿no? Prácticamente en siete, ocho días. Entonces, este... Pues sí, cansado, pero bueno, tratando de hacerlo de la mejor manera para recuperarnos y para poder estar lo más cerca al 100% el, eh, mañana, el próximo sábado, para, para poder eh, pelear contra, contra un equipo que es durísimo y que sabemos que es el, que es el Cali Clásico y que, que es muy importante para, para las dos instituciones, como para ellos, como para nosotros. Y bueno, obviamente queremos seguir sumando puntos para poder acercarnos al playoff. Y lo de Funes Mori, como, como siempre, a un jugador que es mexicano y un compañero de, de profesión, desearle todo lo mejor y que ojalá la pueda romper y pueda ayudar muchísimo a, a la selección que, 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 que por eso lo están convocando, para que pueda ayudar a ese equipo y que, como bien lo dije, que se lo dije a Fer, de darle todo lo mejor y lo, y lo más positivo a esa selección. Gracias, Javier. Gracias, Rodrigo. We'll go next to Jairo Silva. Jairo, go ahead. Thank you. ¿Cómo andas, Javier? Bien, ¿y tú? También muy bien. Oye, este, ya hablaban de Fraín Álvarez tú como uno de los referentes ahora en el LA Galaxy, ¿cómo, ¿qué consejo le darías? Te hablo de otro jugador, de Macías. ¿Qué consejo le darías de canterano a canterano como Rosy Blanco? Eh, ahora que su futuro en Chivas parece incierto y que surgen los rumores de su partida a España, eh, no sé, ¿cómo te sentiste tú la primera semana, el primer mes que estuviste en Manchester? ¿Qué consejo le darías a José Juan? ahora que parece que se va al viejo continente. A ver, yo no me considero nadie para poderle darle consejos absolutamente a nadie de lo que decida hacer con su vida, ni mucho menos. Yo no soy ni mejor que, 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 que Juan, que José Juan, ni, ni, ni muchísimo peor. Somos seres humanos y entonces lo único es desearle todo lo mejor y, y yo sé que él es capaz de, de poder conseguir lo que él se proponga, al igual que a Efraín Álvarez, ¿no? Aquí lo único es de que... Otra cosa que ya, ya, ya me alargué muchísimo en la, en, la, en la pregunta en inglés para hacerlo muy conciso y es no nada más para jugadores jóvenes, no nada más para futbolistas, no nada más para deportistas, sino para cualquier ser humano. Hay que, hay que entregarse, hay que darlo todo porque uno nunca sabe quién te está viendo. Y eso cuando, lo, cuando me refiero cuando uno nunca sabe quién te está viendo es la oportunidad a lo mejor te está viendo ahí y está viendo si estás listo o no para que, para que se te presente. Entonces uno siempre hay que entregarlo todo como si no existiera mañana, en, como se lo dije a Katia, ¿no? en, los, en los sueños, en los trabajos que sean, porque uno nunca sabe y principalmente en mi vida yo no tenía ni la pinche menor idea que el Manchester United me estaba siguiendo desde Chivas. Y era algo completamente, exactamente esa sonrisa que igual yo se la sigo teniendo de que ¿cómo es posible? Pues ¿cómo es posible? Uno nunca sabe. Entonces yo soy la clara imagen de que, de que si yo lo puedo conseguir y que si yo di ese salto y que si yo, cualquier otro ser humano, sea mexicano, sea de, de cualquier nacionalidad, de cualquier religión, de cualquier de todo, puede conseguir sus sueños. Entonces siempre hay que entregarlo todo porque uno nunca sabe quién, quién lo está observando. Awesome. Thanks, Javier. We appreciate your time. That's all we have for today.